I'm Rebecca of Pocket Full of Posies. Today's video is my Edwardian day dress. I am so excited, so excited to share this with you. And I used a pattern from Black Snail Patterns for this. And this video is kindly sponsored by Black Snail Patterns. And if you would like a 15% discount on any digital pattern, you can use the link below or type in pocket full of posies for a promo code. This dress has been a while in the making. I've been planning it for a while and I finally get to share it with you. I decided to alter this day dress pattern a little bit as far as the materials I used because I really wanted one of those frothy, sheerish, Edwardian white day dresses. So that's what I did. So without further ado, here we go. I'm using Black Snail Patterns number 0916, the Edwardian day dress pattern and I will be making a few changes to the pattern as I go. I began by making a mock-up of the bodice. Okay, so, oh, Thor just came in. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Mock-up is done, and I'm going to put my corset on and try it on me. Tried it on Freya, looks pretty good. I'm gonna make a few changes um, and I'm going to try the mock-up of the collar because Black Snail, as much as I love Black Snail patterns, a lot of times collars are small, even if you're not a big person. So I'm going to try that out and see what I need to do. I know I need to make the neckline bigger, wider, so I'm going to cut some of that off of the mock-up before I try it on. All right, here we go. I tried it on over my Edwardian corset, link below to that video, and realized I needed a bit more room and that the back was a little short. After making note of those changes I needed, I started assembling the skirt pattern. Each skirt gore piece is lengthened 10 inches. The skirt ruffle pieces are likewise lengthened by 10 inches. Onto the bodice lining, I used cotton voile. After cutting the bodice lining pieces out, I pinned the darts. Also, don't worry mama, I did iron these pieces eventually. To the machine to sew the darts and the center front seam. I cut the darts open, zigzagged the raw edges, and whip stitched them down. Then I added strips of twill tape to act as boning channels on each dart. I sewed the boning channels down by hand. I went ahead and put the boning channels in the lining, even though the pattern says to do it later after the lining and the outer fabric are connected but since since I'm using such thin fabrics I figured it should probably go ahead and do that now rather than risk accidentally going through to the outer fabric when I'm hand sewing those boning channels in. So did it to the front piece now I'm going to connect the back pieces on the side piece to the front piece and then of the lining and then I'll do the boning channels in the side seams as well. So off we go. Next I pinned and sewed the back lining pieces to the side lining pieces. I also watched Jeeves and Worcester. Hercules was helpful as always.
I moved back to the skirt and began pinning the gores together. I had some moments of confusion when it seemed like my marks weren't lining up, but then I realized I marked one of them incorrectly. I fixed that and all was well. When I got all of the gores pinned together, I put it on Freya to check the fit. I had a little excess at center back, but I didn't cut any off because I wanted to test the fit on me with the corset and hip pad. Time to sew the skirt gores together, and I used a quarter inch seam allowance instead of a 5 8 inch seam allowance as the pattern indicated because I knew I needed more room in the hip area. My next step was making the skirt placket. I sewed the bottom edge right sides together, trimmed and turned it right side out. The placket will close with hooks and eyes. I sewed the eyes on the placket before sewing the placket to the skirt. The placket is pinned to the skirt and then sewn so that the eyes barely protrude the seam allowance. Hercules assisted while I reread the placket instructions. I don't know why, I was just confused. The, the instructions made sense. I just couldn't make sense of them in my head <laughs> for a while. To sew the placket, I took it slow and used the hand wheel of the machine to make sure the needle didn't hit the metal eyes. Then I sewed the right side facing. That's when I realized it was too narrow to do a double fold, so I just zigzagged the raw edge. I sewed hooks to the right side of the skirt opening. Both kitties felt the urge to lend their support as I top stitched next to the seam line of the placket and right side facing. The instructions said to do a prick stitch, but I was lazy. Then I pinned and sewed the back seam closed up to the placket. Then Lucius needed even more love, and I admit I appreciated the cuddles. Hercules had to get in some cuddles too. Onto the skirt ruffle. I pinned and sewed the ruffle pieces together. Then I went ahead and hemmed the ruffle before gathering it. Also, I elected not to line the skirt because I wanted to maintain a certain amount of sheerness. I admit it freely that I sewed the hem on the machine. My next step was pinning the ruffle to the bottom of the skirt and gathering it to fit. needed pets. To the machine to sew the ruffle to the skirt. Hi, 
right, my skirt is basically finished. I still have to put the waistband on, but I'm gonna wait to do that because I need to put my corset on and all of that to, to check the fit for the waistband because Freya has a different style corset on than my Edwardian corset, so I just wanna make sure that it's gonna fit correctly. Um, so, and I also want to put the, the hip pad on and all of that before I finalize that waistband on the skirt. So the bodice, the bodice lining is done. I still need to add the boating channels on the side seams, but other than that, it's done. The lining is done. I'm about to start putting together the outer fabric and I'm using a different fabric than the skirt mostly because I had it and I thought it was it was pretty and it went with the skirt well because the skirt has these little raised dots <laughs> on it and so does the bodice fabric but the bodice fabric also well I'm just gonna show you hang on <laughs> the bodice fabric also has these little it almost looks like insertion but it's not it's just little lines and I thought that would be very very pretty for the bodice so they match they go together but they're not exactly the same that also means because the way this is made it's not um, the skirt and the bodice are not actually sewn together they're just attached with hooks and eyes like you attach the skirt to the bodice with hooks and eyes so I figure I can mix and match I can use this bodice with different skirts if I want to so I'm pretty excited about that so however I'm getting going with the outer fabric for the bodice and I cannot find the pattern piece for the sleeve lining so I think I might have to print those pieces out again because I've searched and I mean let's be honest my room is a disaster at this moment there is stuff everywhere and there's just it's bad so that's probably why I can't find it I probably stuck it somewhere thinking oh I'm gonna need this and now I can't find it so I may just print those pages out again and uh, for the sleeve lining and then I'll get going with that. I'm going to use that same wall, the plain wall um, that I used for the bodice lining, for the sleeve lining and yeah, I also can't find the waist, the skirt waistband pattern piece. They must be together somewhere. <laughs> with Lucius or Hercules <laughs> or something. I don't know where they are, so I might print that out again too. Although I think I can just cut out a waistband for the skirt. Yeah. Hey, Mal. Yeah. Yeah. Are you telling me you don't have it? You don't have it? You don't know where it is either? So, here we go. I sewed the bodice outer fabric side seams and shoulder seams. Next, I pinned the collar to the neck edge of the bodice. After sewing, I trimmed and clipped the curved seam allowance of the collar. I made the placket for the bodice next, and the process is exactly the same as the skirt placket, except you sew the top closed right sides together instead of the bottom. I actually followed the directions and used a prick stitch on the bodice openings next to the seam allowance. Now to attach the bodice to the bodice lining. I pinned them together at the neckline first. Next, I pleated the bottom front of the bodice to fit the lining and pinned it to the lining.
progress is being made on my dress. I have pinned the outer fabric onto the lining of the bodice. And there's a collar, a jabot collar, I believe is what it's called, that I have to figure out or even decide whether I'm going to use that collar. I don't know. Maybe it's already cut out, so at least the outer, you know, the base layer of the collar is cut out. It's supposed to have lace on it. And I have some lace that I think would look pretty. However, it has a really pretty edge. And with the shape of the jabot, I wouldn't be able to use that pretty edge unless I cut it or did some finagling of it. And I'm not sure how that would go. Anyway, I'm still thinking about that part of it. But I need to put the waistband on the skirt. I need to uh, baste, baste the lining and the outer fabric together along the bottom edge and along around the arm side. And then after that, put the lining and the collar and then attach the waistband and then it's pretty much done except for the jabot which I'm still deciding on so yay! I basted the bodice to the lining along the waist and arm size Then I press the seam allowance under on the bottom edge of the collar lining. My next step was pinning and sewing the collar lining to the collar right sides together. I trimmed the seam allowance and flipped the lining to the inside. The folded edge will cover the raw edges of the collar. I sewed the lining down with a whip stitch. Then I spent some time on the jabot collar. I decided to make it separate from the bodice so that I can wear it or not as my fancy takes me. I pinned and sewed lace to the base fabric. Back to the bodice and time to tackle the waistband. I added some sew-in interfacing to the lining. Next I pinned the waistband fabric to the lining at the bottom edge right sides together. After sewing, I flipped the waistband right side out and top stitched along the bottom edge. My next step was pinning and sewing the bodice waist to the waistband outer fabric. I turned the waistband lining edge under and whip stitched it to the bodice, covering the raw edges on the inside of the bodice. I realized I had some eyelet left over from my combination, so I sewed the pieces together and gathered them to attach the, to the jabot collar. I pinned the waistband to the skirt next and sewed it on. I turned it over and folded it to cover the raw edges on the inside of the skirt. Back to the fancy collar. I arranged the eyelet around the bottom edge of the collar. I checked out the effect on Freya and experimented with more lace trim. More lace is always better than less lace, right? I sewed the smaller lace trim on with a loose running stitch. I wanted to make sure it didn't fold over onto itself. Then I realized that I had forgotten to add the boning to the boning channels, so I did that.
To finish the bodice waistband, I added a skirt hook and bar. And now, the sleeves. I did have some sleeveles, but it was my own fault, not the pattern or the instructions. I first assembled the sleeve lining. Next, I ran some gathering stitches on the top of the outer sleeves. I pinned and sewed the outer sleeve seam on both sleeves. After sewing the cuffs to the lining right sides together, I began putting the lining and outer sleeve together, matching marks and making sure things were lining up correctly. Another change I made was to gather the bottom of the outer sleeve instead of pleat. It was just easier for me. Then I folded the cuff up over the bottom of the outer sleeve. I sewed the cuff down by hand. I started pinning one sleeve in. I then realized the opposite sleeve was backwards. Luckily, I hadn't sewn the outer fabric or cuff on yet, so I just zigzagged the raw edges and turned it out the opposite way. All it means is that on my right arm, the seam allowance is against my skin on the inside instead of against the inside of the outer fabric. No big deal. Sleeves in and it's complete. I added a hook and bar to the skirt to close the waistband and put the whole ensemble on. I am in absolute love with the floofiness of this dress. I think it is so pretty and just summery and Anne of Green Gables-y and just, yeah, I think it's so pretty. I also wanted to say that if you want to make a frothy, frilly, Edwardian summer dress, go for it. You don't have to do hours upon hours of painstaking insertion lace to have a pretty dress. I mean, if that's your passion, by all means, insert away. But a lovely ensemble can be achieved with machine sewing and pretty fabric too. I don't suppose I can have an Edwardian hot girl summer since... I'm not single, but I guess I could have an Edwardian hot married lady summer. Well, as it's too hot outside to take photos, I will keep my hotness indoors in the air conditioning for now. so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload, you can hit that little bell icon. If you'd like to support the channel further, I have a coffee account and that is linked down below. Stay tuned next week for some Edwardian accessories that I am making and putting together for my day dress. I will see you again on our next sewing adventure. Bye!